Come get your tips and tactics for playing new chaos using the Traders Hate supplement. Spacking bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to the longwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. All right, hobby maniacs, Rob Bear here today with our tips and tactics breakdown for Chaos Space Marines and a new Traders Hate supplement. Now, a lot of people out there have a lot to say about this book, to be quite honest. And I'm obviously one of them. Uh, I've been playing Chaos pretty much forever. Uh, ever since there was a Chaos, I've played Chaos. I don't know what it's like to not play Chaos, except for in 7th edition, because I literally haven't played Chaos I, in, in 7th edition at all. I actually used my seventh my Chaos models to make super friends, because that's how disgusted I was with the rules. You know, I, I couldn't even really make that much with a conventional Chaos Space Marine. And that's where, why I like this new book, because now we have a new hope for seeing Chaos Space Marines on the tabletop, which I know if you're listening to this, you either at some point played Chaos or one of your buddies played Chaos, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Chaos is one of those armies that everybody has it or everybody knows somebody that plays. And now it's gonna be really cool because we are gonna see these Space Marines on the tabletop. Now, what version of Chaos are we gonna see on the tabletop competitively? Well, that's gonna, that's gonna vary wildly too because you know, you've already got the Cabal out there that is really kind of coming up and, and doing its thing and really supplement a lot of armies out there from demons to night renegades. And now we're seeing where we, we've unlocked these chaos, po these psychic powers for chaos space marines as well now, right? So that's gonna, it's a huge boon for these guys. Now, is that gonna, be, are you gonna be able to put chaos space marines on the tabletop and win a grand tournament? Uh, pro probably not. Uh, you might if it's a, if it's a hobby, bring in a hobby back event. But chances are that you're really gonna need uh, that that kind of hobby help in order to do it. Now. Uh, in my first look review, I actually, I actually didn't realize there was a third chapter here because I'm a stupid. There's actually um, a third chapter here, and it goes over more of the story. And I, I read it, and it's, it was probably a chapter I shouldn't have missed because it was actually really good. Karn actually takes the Gore Child and drops an Imperial Knight with it. Uh, you know, when two, two thrusts of the Gore Child basically topples it, you know, uh, at, at the knee joint and cuts off its uh, Reaper chain sword. So it's a nice little, because you know, uh, Angron did that whole thing with the Warhound in uh, the uh, Betrayer, Horus Heresy novel. So it's kind of cool to see Karn kind of do the same thing for an Appeal Knight that I thought was pretty neat. So don't miss, uh, don't miss the fluff section of this. <laughs> it's always worth taking a, taking a read for sure. Now, when we get to the actual rules here, this this is where it really starts the you know the book starts to become super important now we're already seeing that there is going to be a black crusade book too it's going to be angel's blade it's going to pretty much contain just blood angel rules from what it looks like so we're not going to get any more chaos hell probably for a while and obviously they're not going to lower the points so what i'm going to do is go through here and we're going to talk about uh normally i go through and i talk about the war gear but there is no war gear there's no warlord traits either extra which i guess kind of makes sense because there's some other supplements like some crimson slaughter uh, supplements and a Black Legion supplement, but I'm a little disappointed. I'm gonna grade stuff these days. I'm, I'm gonna basically take a combined score of competitive versus uh, hobby or versus uh, narrative or, or fluffy or what, and, and give it a combined score of what I think. Games Workshop, you get a D for not having any war gear or warlord traits in here because those are obviously used by both uh, fluffy and competitive players. And it's just, it blows my mind that she didn't put any in here. I, I appreciate everything you did with this book and, and the effort you made, but that, it's just a glaring, um, um, just a just a missed missed opportunity there. Like, how do you not put war gear and warlord traits in this book? Like, I'm just, I'm very frustrated by it. It, it vexes me greatly. Now, getting over to uh, updating the book over more towards what the what the Space Marines have, you know, giving them the squadron ability here for the Vindicator and also the Predators and that combined ability where you get Monster Hunter and Tank Hunters as long as you have, uh, as, while the unit has three Predators and while you can actually shoot with the Vindicators, you can do that combined shot with the large blast, or excuse me, the massive blast that ignores cover, which I think, or the apocalyptic blast, 
which is great. Really brings it in line, and there's a lot we can do with that, which we're gonna see when we break down some of these formations. I love this. I love what they did here. This is this is like an A plus right here because I think there's gonna be some competitive lists out there that run it, but there's definitely gonna be more fluffy lists that run this right here. And I I for one out of three minute cares, you know, because I played them in Apocalypse, so why would I not, right? So it's so cool to see be able to do that. Now I don't have as many predators as I would like, so we might have to get there soon. Now when it comes to the detachment, this is obviously an A plus. Like it's it's decent. It's not it's not everything everybody wanted it to be. We'll just call it an A. It's not an A plus. It could have been an A plus, but it's not just because of the fact that there's no freebies. Well, there is freebies, and and let me caveat that. So the freebie is that basically you get anything you take in this detachment, you get hatred armies of the Imperium, which hatred is a really great mechanic because on the charge, you basically get to reroll your hits, which is amazing right because that's what chaos does it charges things however if they have the option of taking the veterans of the long war special rule they get they can do so for free now that's that is does one of two things so veterans of the long war lets you get basically the same thing preferred enemy uh chaos Beast, or preferred enemy all flavors of space marines right that also gives you plus one leadership unless it's included in your profile like some of the hq choices already come with it so they're not going to get the, the leadership bump and they're not going to get it for free because it's already included in their profile but a lot of the troops and elites choices could get it for extra points and now get it for free and get that leadership bump so that's that's something to definitely talk you know talk about uh, i feel like it's one of those things that um that's it's it could have been cool if we got all this free you know weapons or free transports or something like that but the fact that chaos got that it's still pretty good like i, I feel like there's a little missed opportunities here but that's a good consolidation prize i feel like oh well there you go now everybody knows what my ringtone is <laughs> that's not hansen i swear uh <laughs> it's funny because when we record in the long run I'm, I'm always like yelling at people i'm like all right make sure you mute your phone and then I start recording this without muting my phone. Anyways, please forgive my obvious huge mistake right there. So I'm actually um, looking through this and another thing to talk about too is the, the path to glory. At the start of each friendly turn, a model in this detachment with the, chaos, the champion of chaos special rule can roll on the chaos boon table. So you just get to pick a dude that's champion of chaos. The model has uh, gets to roll on the chaos boon table. If he has a favorite scions, which is part of the chaos warband, then they roll twice and apply one or both results. Now I want to talk about the um, I want to talk about the boons, but I want to check something else really quick. Uh, a universal special rule here. Now, one of the things I looked up was rage because uh, that is actually really important when it comes to um, if you get attacks for disorganized charge, and that's something we're going to talk about here in a little bit. But to do, do hatred just lets you reroll uh, failed to hit rolls in the first round of close combat. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. So, and the uh, veterans of the long war ability, I believe, is preferred enemy all flavors of space marines, which they actually surprisingly clarified for back in 2012. They, they surprisingly clarified that in the Chaos Codex itself, uh, if you read the entry, which is going to be um, at the start of the book, which I didn't bookmark, but it's towards, remember the old, the Chaos book, if you, if you pick it up now because you are using this, it's the old format, which is really weird because it has all the points and everything in the back. <laughs> it's just, everything's kind of like, just kind of everywhere. All right, so have Hatred Special, Hatred Space Marines, special rule and plus one leadership so it's not preferred enemy i was just double checking that sometimes i get things mixed up so it's hatred for both but like i said the the boon here is your plus one leadership because remember you're not fearless chaos is not fearless unfortunately but having the plus one leadership is kind of a big deal because there's a lot of things out there um that really affect leadership and having that higher leadership will definitely help you especially on the charge because Having hatred means you're going to be charging, so you want to be uh, really buffed up right there. Now, like I was saying, talking about the boon table. Boon table is an interesting thing. Uh, <laughs> chaos giveth and chaos taketh for sure. And sometimes chaos definitely taketh, but the ability to uh, pick 
which one you get. Now, obviously, when you roll for these, the big ones to look out for are spawn hood. You don't want that because he turns into a spawn. But you can get the dark apotheosis, which turns them into a demon prince, which is always good too. However, there's some other good ones too that are really good to look out for, like the fragment of immortality. The champion now has the eternal warrior special rule, which is really hard to get in chaos. Uh, so that's one to look out for, and that's on a roll of uh, 24. If you get that one, you probably want to keep it. Um, then there's a Feel No Pain one for um, number 63. Uh, Shield of Force, 34. The champion has a shot at special roll, which remember confers to everybody within six inches around it, I believe. Or maybe that's shrouded at psychic power. It might be shrouded psychic power. See, you know, I get down here and I do all my research. I do all my stuff and do my due diligence. I write down my notes. And then as I get talking, even more things come up. And I tell you what, man, now more than ever, 40K is really, really, really a college level course and in a lot of ways more than one so shrouded is it just gives you plus two two points better than normal is shrouded psychic power is what I was thinking of that confers out so it is not that it is just the two points higher so, but having shrouded in a squad is definitely good too and let's see what's some other good ones uh, life taker melee attacks have instant death special rule as long as you have a low AP that's great those are the big ones I really feel like besides Dark Apotheosis to look out for. So some really good boons right there that you're probably going to, I mean, remember there's only, what is it? It's a D, it's a, um, it's 2D6. Well, there is a lot of rolls on here. So chances are that you won't see it every game, but just the fact that you know that you can get these bonuses and they may or may not help you is really good. Now there's 11 formations in here, which we've talked about. Of course, this detachment, which we've already talked about, which makes fielding a lot of cool army lists like some of the stuff we talked about on the long war was basically taking double war bands and you still have points to put things in or you could take a war band and you can take like either the cult of destruction with some obliterators or you could take the hammer of gods where you get extra vindicators um, and remember they're getting the bonuses the six inch invulnerability and things like that so th there's a lot of things you could do or you could even take you could take the Fist of the Gods with all those Vindicators and the, uh, the uh, Cult of Destruction with nine obliterators and you'd be doing the double shots with the Warpsmith. Maybe take out instead of doing, um, well, you have to do the full three for the Cult of Destruction. I was going to say you could take three out and maybe do a Cabal, but you wouldn't have any points. So that would maybe be like a 2,500 point list, which you really don't see that quite that often. But then you can do things like double Renegade Knights, single Renegade Knights. You can have all the Obliterators and a Renegade Knight or a Warband and two Renegade Knights or even a whole bunch of uh, Cultists and two Renegade Knights to, str to screen them. And then that way you just go double Gatling Cannons. So there's a lot of different options you have at 1850. Now getting into the data sheets, uh, Carnival Betrayer. Eh, you know, he's, I'm going to give him a C on his grade. I mean, he does unlock troops. The Corn Berserk is his troops now, which is kind of cool. He didn't do that before. He's still the same amount of points. Still not Eternal Warrior. Like, how did this guy make it 10,000 years without an Eternal Warrior? He literally died and came back to life. And he's still not Eternal Warrior. Like, that blows my mind, Games Workshop. Like, what are you thinking? He cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a freaking Chapter Master and survive unless he gets a bunch of lucky 5 up and vulnerables, which we all know what the odds of that are, right? So there's that. He has good stats. I mean, he, he will kill other stuff, but he will not go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most powerful badass human or guy on foot out of a Space Marine army. You know what I mean? He might even not... I don't even know if he could kill a Demon Prince, to be quite honest. I mean, theoretically, he's going to get... I mean, he doesn't even have the initiative to kill a Demon Prince. So think about that for a minute. Like, he... I mean, in theory, he's a badass. But in rules-wise, not a badass. But he still is has a place in some armies, I feel like. The Lord of Skulls... Oh, man. I really want this to be so good. I'm going to give him a D. And not because he isn't cool looking. And not because I don't want to play with him. I do want to play with this guy. I want to field him. But... He not being able to stomp, huge attraction. 888 points, I could get two Renegade Night Titans for that and have twice as much fun than taking one Lord of Skulls. Like, he's just bulky, he's cumbersome, his points do not match his abilities. If his abilities match his points, I could see it. But, oh man, that, all that, it just, there's no reason to take him. Like, there really isn't. Like, even in Apocalypse, like, I want to take this guy, but I would rather have two Renegade Knights. And that's kind of the same points. So I'm sorry, Lord of Skulls. You look dope and all, but 
I just can't field you. <laughs> uh, Chaos Warband is, uh, we'll go with an A, because I feel like it's a solid It's a solid choice. There's not a whole lot of wasteful tax taxes here, so to speak. I mean, maybe your biggest waste is two units of Chaos Space Marines at, you know, small squads of five that will be object secured, objective secured now. You can put them in Rhinos. I feel like that's okay. That's an okay tax. I really do. Cast Terminators, you can take the, you know, the good old Termicide squads, Deep Strike in, you know, your combi weapons, basically they're gonna get punked down, but they're gonna do some damage. Or you can target their squishy backfield and go in and do some work there. Uh, Chaos Lord or a Chaos Sorcerer, which you can, of course, sub out for Abaddon, Huron, Karn, etc, etc, etc. Now, over here, your one to three units, uh, I would recommend some Chaos Bikers because Chaos Bikes are cheap, they're fast, and they can have that combi weapon action, which is really good. And again, they're objective secured. So if they're still kicking around at the end of the game, well, you know what? They're going to be taking objectives, which is really dope. And then you can have one to three units of Havocs or Hellbrute. Now, normally I would say Hellbrutes are complete garbage, unfortunately, because the same problem with Dreadnoughts. They do get their four attack bonus now, but they're not objective secured, except in this formation right here, which is solid. You'll never hear me say, hey, it wouldn't be so bad taking a Hellbrute, except for in this formation right here, right? Havocs are great. Um, not being able to give them, you know, tank cutters or anything cool like that, which is kind of like a... Um, not not digging it. I think I think they missed they missed something right there. Um, but there is that. So, but taking them with auto cans is definitely good, and being objective secured would definitely help them out a lot. And then at the end, there's the favorite science rule for rolling on the cast moon chart. Maelstrom Agor. Oh, I'm not gonna. See, I don't think you'll see a lot of this. Sure, it's narrative. Maybe it's like a C. Um, and it gives you extra attacks. You can pile in and do these extra attacks with the red rain, which by the way is a corn bloodbound. Uh, same exact special rule ported over directly from Age of Sigmar by the way I'm sure we'll see a lot more of that in the future so three inches to their charge distance and the fleet special rule is that gonna win you games no but it's gonna let you charge I mean you're already charging on average with a fleet you're probably gonna be charging you know eight to nine inches on average with a fleet because you can reroll it and probably get something higher but adding that extra three in now you're up around 11 I don't think that's too bad at all. You're going to get in, and you're going to have hatred against armies of the Imperium, but they are berserkers at the end of the day. They do have a lot of attacks, and they do the Lord's work, but there's so much other stuff out there that trumps things in combat. Combat isn't what it used to be, unfortunately. They need to make combat just as effective as shooting, and then we'll be able to talk some more. Lost of the Damned, I think this is a great formation. It's probably like a B minus. It's good, but the ability to bring them back on a four up kind of negates that a little bit. I mean, it's kind of like a 50-50. It's nothing you can plan on, but if you take enough units, you will see them coming back, which is cool. The Zealot Special Rule I love because that is a great ability to give out to six inches uh, around here. Now, we talked about that on the show. Basically, Zealot is better than Fearless because it confers everything that fearless does and one extra ability which i actually forgot already uh let's see it's morale pinning oh i believe it's fear but that seems weird that if you're fearless you're not immune to fear checks hmm let's look that up right now anyways a lot of people forget that with demons you know pretty much every demon out there has uh has a fear ability so once you get into hand to hand with them you can always force your opponents to do a fear check and if they fail it's basically like you got a free invisibility off which is <laughs> super hilarious um let's see fearless as a universal special rule so don't forget that if you're a demon player always make your opponents roll for their fear checks because you never know fearless uh cannot Automatically cast penny and fear regroup. Oh, it's the same thing. Cannot go to ground and cannot choose the fail morale check. Hmm. So let's. Uh. So it's still pretty good, too. Template weapon. Sell it. Here we go. Uh, automatically passes pure pinning, fear, regroup, and morale checks. It cannot go to ground. Uh, hmm. Well, a cursory look, I can't really tell what they do, but just the fact that they automatically pass pinning, regroup, and morale checks is good enough for me. Um, 
in addition oh okay so it's got built-in hatred that's what it is oh, i knew it was good okay so that basically has a built-in hatred where they can reroll all their uh to hit rolls on the first round so you see like um the imperial priests have this and then also the demagogues uh you know um guys here as well I think this is a solid formation if you have all those cultists out there and remember you can always sub in and make them plague zombies as well if you take a typhus which you can sub in typhus for uh sorcerer and stuff in here if you look in the little uh caveat sections the little um notation sections well you know what i mean they're in there and you can sub him in so you could always take those uh zombies as well uh plague zombies hellforge war pack i think it's okay i mean giving one of the dudes a four up uh, environmental save is great, making him the character is great, but I would rather maybe uh, kind of do that vice versa because I guess he could look out Sir to like some other war machines near him, but then the fact that uh, they don't have the invulnerable saves kind of makes it not worth it, I guess. I don't know. Um, being able to, to pop the Demon Forge a couple of times is good. Don't forget, if on a roll of one, you do take that hull point, so that could actually hurt you later on in the game. But the Warsmith is always there, and he could probably fix it. Uh, the Warsmith fixes things on a four up in this configuration right here. I think it's an average, I think it's pretty average, so we'll give it a C right there. Hildrake Terror Pack, again, a decent formation, nothing to write home about. I mean, it, it gives extra ability. Chances are you can make stuff break. Um, you can make stuff break in a movement phase, but unless you have another way to make them break in the same phase, you really couldn't run space rings off the board, I don't think. Um, and I can't really think of something that could do it in a movement phase unless you have a unless you have two of these maybe, I guess you could, because then you could cause double checks and theoretically make them break. But then you're talking at least four Heldrakes to take the minimum, so I don't think that's that effective. Uh, being able to do D6, Strength 7, AP2 hits instead of one on, you know, Vector Striking is good, but again, this is one of those things that if you just happen to want to include some Heldrakes, I think it's good. Um, so we'll give it a C-, minus. I think it's okay, I think you might see it every now and then if, uh, if air becomes a thing, but and with the whole death from the skies how people feel about that rule set i think it would be better if you can do your little agility turn and maybe have a chance to make that extra that extra 90 degree turn during the movement phase but then again you know it we kind of got to go with the, the way people are playing it cult of destruction man i love this formation i'm going to give it a, a b plus like it's not super amazing but it's good and you need to be aware of this of this one right here so what this does is you can take one to three warp smiths and three to five squads of obliterators or meteorators so technically you could have 15 obliterators on the table not that you normally could but now you could uh which is really neat now they have this thing where they can basically pick the warp smith can pick one of the units here and then it can shoot twice but they have to shoot carry out the first set of attacks to completion they carry out the second set of attacks and unit must use different weapons for the two different sets of attacks and cannot use a weapon it used the previous turn so remember obliterators have this weird thing where they can't shoot the same thing that they shot previous turn and then i have to use two different weapons in sets so you're going to have to like stagger it out and figure out oh okay well this guy's going to plasma cannon this guy's going to lads cannon you know pick your targets and go and then maybe over here you're going to be like oh okay miss you know rocket launcher assault cannon heavy bolt or whatever you know what i mean like kind of you got to plan it out a little bit but war smiths are no joke either because they have the ability to basically curse vehicles right and make them make them get hot so you know you might cause extra hull points on the enemy just because it's kind of something neat to do also in this configuration uh, I believe it is the war smith itself uh, fixes things on a uh, four up right so he can fix other vehicles and all sorts of different things so they're not incredibly useless plus he also um instead of bolster terrain like tech marines they tear down terrain so they cause neg one to uh three set if you take three it would be three separate terrain pieces so being able to lower the enemy's cover saves as well is another good thing to be aware of because hey let's face it if you're throwing out this much firepower and you have the ability to lower their cover saves and perhaps curse some of their tanks so their tanks get hot or their vehicles that even counts a night titan then that's kind of a big deal i feel like so be looking for these in the rise of nine obliterators once again fist of the gods is another great formation i love it this is basically getting getting to play apocalypse on the tabletop so one warp smith three to five units of uh, predators vindicators land raiders remember you can take these two as squadrons now which is amazing uh if they're within 12 inches of their warp smith they all get a six up invulnerable 
uh, he also gets a plus one to making attempts. So now he's fixing all these things. You know, the hull points, the immobilized, the weapon destroyed on three ups, which is pretty much amazing. So, you know, if, if the 50-50 chance fails and you suffer a weapon destroyed because you didn't take the Storm Bolter, which you should always take the Storm Bolter on this, and you lose your main battle cannon there, well, guess what? He can fix it on a three up, yeah, as long as he's in base, which is pretty neat. I think we're gonna see a lot of these. Like I said, it kind of gave you some rough ideas there on some army lists using them, because remember, a squadron of three can combine their fire into the Apocalypse Blast that ignores cover. Raptor Talent, you know, this is this is a this is probably like a B like a like a B plus right here. Raptor Talon, you know, initially I was like this formation is garbage. Like I was not impressed with it. I was like Raptors can't do poop if you charge and they're disorganized because they already have one attack. And then if you take lightning claws, well now you're down to one attack. And what's the point of attacking with lightning claws if you're one attack? But I was talking to Evan Veldike and he was telling me about this game he was playing against. Some guy took the Raptor Talon. He's like, man, I nearly got tabled by this thing. And I was like, what? What? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, all right, tell me, tell me, tell me what happened. Okay. So basically, what happened was all the cultists or the the champions had claws, which you know they're already getting an extra attacks. Now there's three attacks, so they're not getting a bonus for charging, which is fine because of three attacks. They were taking Marcus Lanesh, so they got to you know the initiative off. But what he did was he dropped them in and he charged squishy stuff in the backfield, and you know that was scoring or that was you know whatever, just stuff in the backfield. And your enemy is always thrown kind of off his off his game when you go after his backfield stuff, and then he has to like turn around and deal with it, and then you can kind of march unmolested across the tabletop towards him. And I was like, oh well, in that yes, in that case, I think it's great. But as an alpha strike kind of contingent, no, terrible, terrible, terrible. So. We're going to upgrade this to my initial probably D, D minus to a solid C plus as long as you use this thing smartly, you know what I mean? So basically what it does is it lets you uh, arrive from Deep Strike Reserve and they count as making a disordered charge. If you mark them with Marker Corn, even though they get Rage, they don't get the bonus attacks because that counts, it. they don't get it if it's a disorganized charge. So you can't kind of work around it there. So really the best configuration is the Marker Slanesh because you get the initiative bonus at least. So even if you're not gonna get all your attacks, at least you're probably gonna get to swing with your attacks first to get squishy stuff in the backfield, you know what I mean? Um, and then the other thing too, they must subtract a leadership of two. So chances are they might even run off the board edge if you're doing that as well. Terminator Annihilation Force, ah, this is solid like C minus. I feel like it's good. Um, it does some cool stuff, but really it's not worth really writing home about. Okay, so at the start of the game, you nominate an enemy unit. Units in this formation have the hatred special rule when making attacks against the nominated unit. Okay, great. Well, that means I have to land, and then I have to get into combat with you. Okay, cool, I guess. <laughs> in addition, units from this formation can make a shooting attack against the nominated unit um, that they when they deploy by deep strike. Okay, getting a little better. If it's within range and line of sight. This does not stop the unit from shooting later in the same turn either at the same time or different target. Now, theoretically, this gets around interceptor fire. But then again, they're terminators. So unless you're taking short range stuff like, you know, in termicide squads, like stuff like, uh, you know, combi meltas or combi plasmas or something like that, uh, it's probably not going to matter. But being able to get shoot, shoot twice is pretty good, I feel like. Uh, taking a cast order sorcerer, you can take a sorcerer, mark a zines, drop him in the front. He's got a three up uh, cover save or a three up and vulnerable save. Maybe you know, maybe you get some rerolls there. Maybe you don't. It just kind of depends on what you're doing and what powers they have. Because remember, there's psychic powers in here too that we're about to get to. Favorite of chaos: one demon prince, three to five units of possessed. I'm gonna say C minus. I want to say D, but I see I see where this could be good because the fact that if they're within 12 inches, they get all three mutations from the mutation table. And remember. You can't use the Demonkin one. GW, it's a different chart. GW actually already came out and said it. They're like, no, you can't use it because it's a different chart, which I understand. I mean, that's that's pretty much fair, I feel like. So for these guys, let me find my bookmark here. These guys, so their three abilities are uh, reroll all to wound rolls. Their melee weapons are three up and they get plus one attack and plus one initiative. Now, when you pull that off, yeah, it's good, especially if you take a Nurgle Demon Prince here. You're jinking for cover, two ups, all that stuff. Yeah, I could see it working. I could see it working, but it's a lot of pieces to get go together at the same time. And you know, Mike Tyson, famous, famous boxer from back in the day, said, hey, 
something about basically everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. And I like to have my armies redundant. So when I do get punched in the face and I'm like, oh, well, now my possess just became poop. Uh, because you killed my demon prince or hey, I got to play this game. I got to play every game exactly the same What happens if my army gets punched in the face? Well, there's <laughs> there's that to think about too You know you want to have a fun time and you want your opponent to have a fun time But if you have to do the same thing over and over in redundancy every turn not only is it not or every game Not only is it not fun for you, but it's not fun for your opponents either probably so there's that you know Just keep it in mind. It's decent. It's worth talking about again. It's okay Trinity of blood This is probably the only F in here uh, it's already a terrible unit in my opinion. I mean it looks so cool. It had so much potential But this is like 2500 This is like 2500 points right here. Who the heck is ever gonna play that like I get it There's some diehards out there. and I love you guys for it But man, this is not something you're gonna see very often and it's just like a pipe dream that they really could have done something else with this page I feel like you know what I mean all right now Nothing changed for the Lord of Skulls war gear. We did get the sorcerer stuff and you know <laughs> There's nothing really new here to be quite honest like it's cool that they took the angels of death uh, Adeptus Astartes new psychic powers and switched them over to bad guy versions But you know as far as talking about the stuff we all pretty much know what they are right so that it's you know It's pretty much the same highlights here. So if you take a look here, we got what? Um, uh, War fate is pretty much amazing being able to reroll all failed saving throws I can see that being huge in a chaos arm and remember chaos sorcerers point for point might be better than space Marines because they have the uh, the little familiar guy right which lets them Get them rerolls on casting so you don't have to throw as many dice. It's almost like their mini little um, uh, What is it librarian a librarian's conclave built in so you take a bunch of these guys you have a bunch of demons You have a bunch of brotherhood of psychers you, you get those warp war points going you really start to do the Lord's work here and the Dark Lord of course and <laughs> So there's that you know, it's it, You can make an argument there. I, I feel like it's definitely valid So that is probably one of the better ones that a lot of people are gonna try to get um, we also saw from of course back in the day when this came out uh, what in March or April I believe it was um, What's some other good ones here? Of course, I'm trying to remember the versions I'm not die. These are okay. I was never really a fan of the technomancy ones uh, the Ectomancy, let's see, the Soul Switch is the one where you can basically switch stuff out that's already in Assault and like uh, move you guys up. And then of course you got the World Wrath, which is where you can teleport the train and Assault out of it, which caused quite a stir back in the day there. Now the Warp Shock uh, power really isn't that bad either, to be quite honest. It's basically like an Assault 6 Heavy Bolter, so I mean, if you get that, that's pretty cool too. I wouldn't complain uh, too much about it, to be quite honest. Um, what were some other good ones? I think those... Those were the big ones there, if I remember correct. Oh, the Ignore Cover one. Where is that? Here it is, right here. Earthly uh, Anthema. In addition, the unit does not need to treat line of sight in order to attack an enemy unit in the shooting phase. As long as it can target at range, it can be shot at. So it doesn't need line of sight, and all of its weapons have Ignore Cover. Now imagine if you throw something like that on a Renegade Night Titan, which is pretty amazing. Remember, you couldn't do that before, but now you can. So you've got the Renegade Knight in here, which I don't, I'm not sure if we covered but it is in here and it's definitely worth taking now a lot of people are like oh man I'm gonna do the double the double DACA um, I'm gonna go to the double DACA version which is great but I still feel like you need that sh that Reaper chain sword in there unless you know you're taking like the cultist formation and you can pretty much guarantee the bubble wrap on it then you could probably maybe take the two gottlers and the top uh, rocket pod right there the one with the concussive uh, I personally like the most oh, did I even get that uh, they get the large barrage, storm spear. Nope, they don't get it. So it's just strength eight, strength eight, AP three, heavy three, which is still pretty solid. I would definitely take that all day right there. Um, so it gives you a lot of options. Having those psychic powers, having that cabal, being able to point and click in these little formations and these into the detachment here, and then everything being able to, of course. Uh, be objective secure this part of this attachment now remember the renegade knight will will be its own detachment You cannot get this in the black crusade force because it's just like the rules out of the renegades um, The knight renegade box, but that being said there's plenty of other ways to do cool stuff now 
One caveat aside, you always have to take an auxiliary of one plus, which could just be one little single unit of spawn, which isn't that bad. You can mark it with corn, not too bad. I think they're like 30 points or something, which overall isn't a bad tax, especially for chaos, I feel like. Like really, for chaos, that's, that's nothing bad at all. So just to give you some ideas of some of the different armies there and some of the different special rules to look out for and some of the different things you're gonna see on the tabletop uh, coming to a game store or a tabletop near you here in the near future. So Chaos is back. It's not super, super back, but it's definitely back enough that you need to be aware of it, especially if you're playing at a more hobby-centric event because a lot of people have these amazing looking armies and really put that hobby love into Chaos Armies. So chances are you could still probably lose a game and win one of those type of tournaments with just a just a basic uh, Black Crusade detachment that's you know painted to above average standard and has some dope conversions and maybe the display board. So that's what bringing a hobby back is all about, and I cannot wait to uh, go lay out all my armwares and <laughs> and see what else I need to paint to make this work. Deleted scenes, bonus content, all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on the Longwar.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.